one's favorite topic, quality assurance. Um, we have, an, we have a, I think, a cool mix of uh, folks with kind of different positions in the organization on this webinar. Um, so I guess to start out, what I will clarify is most of the um, actual policy content really is going to um, refer specifically to 211 specialists. So not too specifically at all really to resource or AHC specialists in terms of their in-person work. Um, I think in terms of the policy piece of it, the thing that's going to be most important to kind of look at and think about, um, since I know both of those QA plans are kind of still in development, but I'm sure your respective managers are going to be kind of meeting with the individual groups about some of the planning for that, um, is just all of the same components you would expect to see. So when we talk about monitoring, when we talk about coaching, when we talk about scoring, um, those plans for QA for AHC and resource should look kind of the same in terms of what kind of details we need to kind of decide on. Um, but the part that really is going to apply to everybody is uh, the new QA software, which is ScoreBuddy. So I know that, you know, once um, you know, AHC and the resource department have their kind of scorecards finalized and developed, I know resource has one that I kind of threw in there just so Mike could kind of play around with it and probably present it to his staff at some point just to get some feedback uh, in the coming weeks. Um, but you'll be logging into ScoreBuddy, you'll be using it. So it, it, I think it'll be really cool to kind of get a demo of the ScoreBuddy software. Um, and so I'm, I haven't started the slideshow yet, Martha, but I will certainly uh, enlarge the screen once I begin. Uh, here, let me just do that now. Sorry, I didn't mean to concern anybody. The slideshow has begun officially. Um, so, so quality assurance. Uh, so what, what I'm going to do is first uh, start out with uh, just a really, really quick overview on quality assurance in general, just to give you kind of a sense, especially for the people who haven't been here before, some of the new staff, um, maybe the HC staff um, and some of the new specialists, um, you know, so that they have a chance to just get a little background and kind of our philosophy and approach to quality assurance, which really should just reflect best practices, I think, for any quality assurance program. Um, then I'm going to roll through just the, proceed, the, the policy and procedure, which is not going to change too much. You're not going to see major changes, and the major changes you're going to see are actually reflective of a lot of the feedback that we got from staff uh, before Susan had left in terms of how scores are presented. Uh, and, and so hopefully some of the changes that you see that you know, do reflect differences, you're like, oh, that's great. That's kind of one of the things that we've been less happy about, um, you know, when we had transitioned from Susan to Stan in terms of who was performing the QA and now getting the program up and running. And of course, the huge changes we are now not using exam anymore, we're using ScoreBuddy. Um, so I'll do kind of a full demo of ScoreBuddy, which I'm hoping you guys will like a bit more than exam, because I think it'll give you a bit more visibility, um, certainly into both being able to benchmark yourself against other employees, I think one of the big issues before was that you really had no sense of how the center was performing. And so people may have felt like they were performing much lower than everyone else when in fact people were around kind of a, just an average that just wasn't being communicated readily. Um, and I think you'll also have more of an ability to get some specific insight and comments on calls that I know people felt like uh, they were kind of left in the dark in terms of why things were being scored in certain ways with exam and hopefully this will mitigate some of that. So that'll be exciting. But let me just start out. Um, quality assurance, hey, like why do, you, why do you do it? Again, this is a pretty straightforward, but like I wrote a little definition, uh, the, the, you know, it's a process that fairly and accurately measures the quality of pre-existing and mutually understood work process and philosophy, right? I mean, that sounds pretty nice, whatever, doesn't really help you on a day to day. Um, I think the really important things about quality assurance is to align expectations. And so that's both among the management team and all of the staff. Um, obviously, it's to support individual improvement and program-wide improvement. Um, and in, from an individual improvement standpoint, that's in doing things like, you know, helping to figure out what sort of coaching plans we may want to develop um, and where we want to focus some of that. And then, of course, in terms of um, program-wide improvement, like I say, with informed trainings, uh, this is where, you know, we can really use it strategically to figure out what we need to have webinars on, uh, what we may want to do group trainings on. Um, one of the other things I think that's really great about the ScoreBuddy platform is that it gives a lot more information about some of those trends 
um, where it's easy for us, easier than it was before to kind of identify, oh, this is a place where kind of maybe we've been remiss in I can really easily see everyone's kind of struggling with this one particular metric. And so, I mean, the issue is not, let's not harp and coach a bunch of individuals because really the issue here is, you know, we have not provided the training or we've not provided the either recently enough or at all. And so, or the expectations are, you know, not being communicated or whatever. Um, it just will help to inform that. Uh, realign expectations. So, I mean, this is the interesting thing when I talk about, you know, what's going on with developing a plan for resource or even especially, I mean, with talking about AHC, where the AHC project is using a lot of the same sort of guidance around how they're assessing people, the conversations they're having, but it's in an in-person environment. It also has a personal interview component and these action plans. Um, and some of that may inform, you know, directionally the work two-on-one is proceeding in over the next, you know, three, four, five years. Um, and so as kind of our service evolves around you know, developing technologies and uh, developing needs, uh, changing needs, um, you know, you expect your QA process to also evolve, but without having some, you know, kind of data on, on some of this, it's really impossible to understand how to do that. And obviously the primary goal is to serve clients better, um, which, you know, I was like building to that, that probably could just be at the top or on its own slide, because that's really the main important thing. Um, why not? And this is all, all towards avoiding the QA Noid. I remember the, the Noid was like an old Domino's mascot, and then there was actually a guy who had the last name Noid, and he went to a Domino's pizza place with a gun because they thought he, they were singling him out, and then they got rid of the Noid. Um, but avoid the QA Noid. Uh, so QA should never be personal. It's not meant to personally, you know, try to call out anybody. Uh, it's certainly not meant to be punitive. We don't want to be overly nitpicky. And to that end, it really, even though we're QAing these individual calls, uh, the process itself shouldn't really be about overly dissecting, you know, a single call. It really is about, you know, like I said, identifying trends either throughout the center or with an individual. And that's positive and negative, you know. Uh, we want to make sure we're giving as much positive feedback to the things uh, any one person or the center is doing well as we are, you know, working to adjust or provide support around places where folks can improve. Um, I think one of the most crucial points with QA for me is that I think um, a QA process is really ineffective if it introduces an additional set of rules or standards. Uh, that must be adhered to on top of, you know, pre-existing or uh, a mutually understood work process and philosophy. And by that, I just mean like you shouldn't have to, your jobs are complicated enough already, right? Uh, in terms of, you know, trying to build rapport and search the database and do these assessments and all of that without also having to say, oh, and then there's those other two or three things that I also have to do for QA. Um, the, the goal with the QA process is that as long as you are focusing on the client and putting you know, all of the capabilities that you guys certainly have and demonstrate on a day-to-day -day basis, as long as that's your focus, um, the process itself should kind of um, be reflective of those activities. Um, and so hopefully, you know, um, our training and the process are, are, are aligned enough. Um, the biggest bummer for me, um, well, I mean, making it about myself. It's not like it was, a, it was a bummer for everyone else, really. I just, it always broke my heart to hear it. it was when people come to me and say, like, um, if they got, like, say, an 80% in QA, um, I think in a helping profession, when you're working and being QA'd for work that isn't just getting someone's cable box, you know, connected or getting someone's internet back up um, at, at, you know, because you're working at Spectrum or whatever, but when you're actually working to try to help someone find a place to live or become food stable or any of these things. Um, you know, I, I've had three or four staff members say, you know, I just hate seeing like an 80% because it seems like that's telling me I'm only helping this person 80% of what I could. And I really just implore everyone to not look at it necessarily that way. Uh, the idea of QA is really like consistency is a word I'm going to be using a lot both in our procedures in terms of how we're selecting calls, how we're monitoring them, how we're scoring them, that has to be consistent. And the whole purpose is to really be able to identify what are the best practices for the work that we're doing and what can we do to make sure those are being, those are happening across as many contacts as possible. 
Um, so you can have a call that's handled kind of outside um, what our kind of defined best practices would be, where somebody does get help. It just may not be a very, it may be a low scoring call if there are certain procedures and protocols that aren't followed correctly, that really should be correct, correctly followed if we're going to programmatically in that capacity provide the best help that we can across the board. Um, and so it's large scale in the same way that when I say it's not about an individual call, it really isn't. And so that's not going to make necessarily some people feel any better when they get a low score. I just always feel really bad because it's never intention to make anyone feel bad um, or certainly um, to make anyone call into question their ability or their potential to help their clients. Um, that is the, the last thing that this process should do. Um, so anyway, enough of kind of that, uh, you know, conceptual ideological stuff. Uh, I actually really want to turn it over to Stan right now because Stan Griffin for the last couple months, um, as we've been kind of leading up to figuring out how we were going to, you know, relaunch QA, um, what platform we were going to use, what maybe certain procedural changes we could have. Um, he comes from a, a, a long background of both performing QA and being QA himself. And so he can talk a little bit about that. But I think he's also going to talk about what he's noticed over the last two months, just listening um, to calls and doing some practice scoring and, um, you know, just working on developing a what he feels like is, um, based on his experience, a uh, decent QA process for us. So Stan, uh, how you doing? Oh, I'm pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, like Matt said, I have been uh, in going in and, and listening to calls and scoring calls. Uh, so I got a pretty good idea uh, of how we're doing across the board as a center. Uh, so uh, as he mentioned as well, I have I came from uh, Cleveland Site Center where uh, I worked with their uh, contact center and, and quality assurance, and I've also been on the receiving end of some of those difficult calls that we handle on a regular basis. Um, so. Um, when I approach quality assurance and I'm going in and I'm, I'm listening to your, your calls, uh, I, I'm putting myself in your shoes. Uh, I'm trying to understand where, where you are and what you're saying. So as I'm doing that, I'm going into, into the database and to refer, and I'm following along and trying to access those same resources that you're looking at, seeing what's available so that I can understand how you got there. Uh, you know, how something may have been missed, how it could be uh, uh, maybe misconstrued or the wording uh, uh, may be confusing. So that's something I can take back to, to management and resource uh, and, and get that kind of thing squared away. So it makes it better for everyone in the end. Um, and so going into uh, quality assurance and what I've actually been looking at here. Uh, so since July, uh, I would say I've been listening to calls and, and, and putting some scores into into the database and playing around with that, learning how to use it and making sure I got a good good grasp on it. So I think I think I'm doing pretty good at this point. Um, and so uh, I'm just going to kind of talk about some of those metrics that we have in place and what I've noticed as far as things that we are doing uh, already, things that we're doing well. Uh, uh, so, so talking about uh, the quality assurance metrics, um, communication, uh, content, and of course procedure. So communication is just talking about, uh, you know, how we how we uh, build that relationship and that dialogue with our callers and say they call in and they're expressing themselves about. Uh, these different situations that they're in and things that they may need assistance with. Um, so starting with the introduction, so we, we, we're we very good with our introductions. We have strong introductions across the board. Uh, and, and that really kind of starts uh, the, the the set of that call, the, how, how that call is going to go. So, um, you know, when you call somewhere and you, you – 
you call into some of these places and someone answers the phone and you know immediately that they probably don't want to be there. They sound like they're not happy to be on the phone at the time you know, that you're calling and whatnot. And you can pick up on that and that kind of sets the tone of of how call how the call is going to go. Uh, so uh, we're very good at, at sounding pleasant and, and, and being a, open and approachable when uh, we do our introductions and making people feel comfortable uh, enough to, to talk with us. Um, we're, we're very professional, we're very confident in what we do here. Uh, indicates to callers uh, that they will be treated with respect uh, because every, everyone deserves respect and you know and, and that goes a long way uh, as far as making uh, allowing people to open up and making them feel comfortable uh, talking about some of these more di difficult situations that they may be in uh, you know some of these folks are coming from a place where they never thought they would be uh, and, and just conveying that respect and showing that you know we're open to to just assisting them uh, despite all that uh, is what helps them uh, kind of open up and, and express themselves. Uh, so, and this also kind of goes hand in hand with the tone and the pace of how you're speaking to someone uh, when, when they're calling. So when, when folks are calling in and, and you know, they, they may have, have a lot going on and, and, and specialists are picking up on that and, and adjusting accordingly uh, to get them that information in a quick manner. Or maybe they uh, uh, they need to, to talk a little bit. Maybe they need to, to figure some things out and, 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 you know, talk some things out and we're able to, to slow it down a little bit and uh, kind of allow that communication to happen so that we can uh, provide some direction what we need to. Uh, making callers aware of their options, so allowing them to be open to, you know, think about what their options are and what may be the best uh, path for them to take. Uh, very clear communication, proper grammar, uh, good sentence structures and things like that. So uh, we, we have some good communication skills. We're speaking clearly. Uh, uh, we're, we're not... Uh, throwing out jargon and, and making up words and things like that where folks have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, so we're able to communicate in a manner where people can understand us and, and, and take that information and use it. Uh, so uh, clear sentences and, 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 and that good dialogue really goes a long way as far as getting out that information in a, in, in a good manner. A uh, big piece of this, uh, of what we do here at 2 on one is, is working without judgment. So uh, we we come across all manner of situations. They, we, we've got some doozies. Uh, some, you know, come, when I listen to these calls and, and, and I hear certain things, it's like, wow. Uh, so uh, just not not being judgmental and 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 being open-minded as we um, take in the information and try to find solutions for folks um, giving uh, individuals the freedom to make their own decisions um, you know without feeling like they're under pressure or, or they have to do one thing or another we're putting the putting the ball in their hands and allowing them you know the, to take in the resources that are available and then they can make the decision as to how they want to proceed. So uh, another strong point here at 211. Uh, going into content, so just talking about the resources that are in our database going in and how we access that information and then being able to uh, take that in and communicate that to uh, the folks that need it uh, and, and, and allowing them to be able to move forward uh, and, and, and do that confidently. Uh, so accurate details and uh, giving the most appropriate referrals uh, to match a caller situation. So uh, we're, we're taking in the information that we're, we're hearing from these callers and we're uh, uh, and, and, and clients who, who are 
coming from all all different places and we're taking their information in and listening to their story and we're trying to match them with the best resource that may assist them. Uh, so uh, just being able to go into the database and access things and then communicate that uh, is a big piece of, of uh, you know, providing a, a good referral and, and being able to provide good service. Uh, making call callers feel comfortable and confident, uh, giving them the ability uh, to follow through and uh, feeling empowered. So allowing them to, you know, we're, we're providing them resources uh, that hopefully will help them continuously uh, as they move forward. Something that may, uh, you know, maybe uh, it'll get them on their feet and then they can, they can, uh, they can be okay. They have an idea of what they need to do. Maybe it's a temporary barrier that they, they have come across and uh, we're providing them with the resource that uh, helps them over that hump and then they're, they'll be good to go from that point. So just giving folks the ability to, uh, to independently move forward. Uh, providing those key resources, those key referrals. So sometimes uh, we're we're, we're going into the database and we see there's more than one option for uh, one more, more than one potential option uh, for a caller situation and we're able to communicate those options and, and let them know you know what we have available to them and what may work for them and then providing that information and, and, and giving them the details that they need uh, in order to access uh, those resources. And my computer just did something funky here. Okay, so um, and just and and then going in and confirming those resources, making sure that callers understand what we're talking about, what we did talk about, why you know why we were uh, walking through uh, finding those resources and getting them the best help. So throughout that conversation. Uh, you know, maybe they, uh, it, it was an emotional conversation, a difficult conversation. So you just want to make sure that uh, they have taken in all the information that you've given. Uh, and and, and, and um, we, we've been very good at that, making sure that callers understand uh, what they need to do in order to access some of these resources, giving them the, the documentation information that they may need to provide, uh, proper phone numbers and things like that, uh, that make it possible for them to move forward and, and follow up on these resources. Uh, and then the other thing that I, I've noticed is when specialists are, are, are working with some of these folks and they are uh, needing to like create, create a plan, they just need a plan of action because they have so much going on and they don't really know what step to take first. Where do I start? Because it's just overwhelming. Uh, and we're able to kind of break that down and, and present them with uh, information in a way that they can kind of focus and then proceed to move forward in, uh, in an orderly fashion and kind of have some control over that. And then uh, just touching on procedure here, uh, when you go and, and have to maybe transfer a call or, uh, you know, direct someone to a third party resource and, uh, within 211 or something like that, um, we're, we're just doing those uh, processes very well. We're, we're following those procedures as far as making sure folks are getting to the right place, making sure that they have all the information that they're going to need, and then uh, making sure that whomever they're going to be speaking with has the information that they will need in order to best serve that person. So um, just overall, very good work we're doing here. Everybody, uh, is, you know, we come and put our best foot forward. And, and those, those are the things that I'm looking forward to, to notice. So, you know, just as you will have uh, the feedback, uh, you know, as far as things that we can improve on, you'll get that feedback as far as things that uh, are, are, are being done well, you know, because we want you to keep doing that too. So uh, very good work and uh, I'll be looking forward to listening to some more and giving you that feedback.
Thanks, man. Uh, and good work, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like I said, so actually, Stan has been doing some score sheets in ScoreBuddy. Um, we went in before this training and assigned everyone to um, two different teams, which, again, I'll, I'll get to with ScoreBuddy. But in that process, um, the score sheets disconnected from everybody's uh, user accounts, um, like kind of those practice ones. But they're, they're going to be reconnected sometime next week by ScoreBuddy, who I contacted after that was like, yo, what up? Um, so uh, you'll, you'll be able to see, you know, within uh, over the course of the next week, um, some of not only what's being done for this month for September for our first kind of official month of QA, but also just see some comments and be able to really explore ScoreBuddy um, in terms of, you know, it's different functionality when you have multiple contacts in there and everything. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, right now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how we're kind of performing quality assurance right now. Um, and um, this is really just going to go through that call monitoring and QA agreement. Um, I'm just going to hit the major points. And so what you'll notice is, again, not too much has changed from how it was set up before. And the changes that we have implemented, I'm hoping you'll perceive as positive changes. Because like I said, a lot of them are kind of in response to uh, feedback we had gotten previously about things that could be improved about QA. Um, and so let's just start running through this. Um, so for monitoring now, uh, Stan is going to review and score at least three calls uh, per month for a specialist. Um, and so that's regardless of full-time status, part-time status. Um, it's just going to be three calls for everybody. Um, I know for especially full-time people, this is actually kind of a reduction in what you had previously seen monitored. Um, but now that we also have Molly uh, working as a full-time coach and trainer, um, there's a lot more going on in terms of coaching plans and things. And so that also creates some additional monitoring from Stan. And I think we're also putting more of a concerted focus in which calls we're pulling so that we are listening each month to some longer to at least one longer than average call for everyone. So between those two things, um, it just seemed to make sense to, in order to create a manageable workload and make sure that we're actually delivering on what we're supposed to deliver to you guys each month at three calls. Um, you know, was, was kind of the best way to go. But you'll see um, we've also kind of adjusted how kind of scores are looked at as well to compensate for there being fewer contacts. Um, so as I kind of just referenced, how are the calls being chosen? I know, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we probably were like, oh, it's random. But like, of course, it, it can't really be random because we have no way of just randomly generating kind of here, listen to this random call and we don't really want to pull them randomly because things like no data calls and stuff we don't there's really no point in scoring um, so the three major uh, components that kind of go into picking a call are a specific type of call and this isn't necessarily always going to be the case but like I referenced with consistency before you know um, if we're talking about utilities because you know it's a month and a half from now when we're in kind of high heap season and we want to do a utility call from everyone that may be something that guides um, you know November's QA process but in that case Stan would then pick and make sure that every person had one utility call chosen just as a measure of fairness um, and so it may be based on skill or project or program like that maybe one month you know we really want to do a focus on Lucas County and we want to make sure that there's one Lucas County call chosen for every person. Um, the day and date of the month. Uh, so we want to make sure we're staggering when we're choosing people's calls. Um, everyone knows like you can have a bad day. We want to make sure that we don't pull all three calls from that one day. Um, we want to get some variability in when we're pulling them. Um, and then the length of the call. Uh, and I, I had referenced this before too. Um, what we're really trying to pay attention to is looking at the average call time for that month and then picking an average length call, um, a shorter than average length call, and a longer than average length call for each person. I know we've always said in the past, well, a shorter call should be as good as a longer call, should be as good as an average call. Um, but I also like, I'm really aware that in the past, especially said they felt like some of the longer calls, especially where they were doing a lot of, um, rapport building with maybe a more difficult caller or where they were forming kind of more complex plans. They felt like those calls were kind of just being um, ignored or not monitored as consistently 
as shorter calls. Um, and I don't know whether or not that that's the case or not, but I know that that was a concern. And so we kind of wanted to make sure procedurally, we kind of built something in to account for um, everyone always kind of having um, at least one longer call um, of the three monitored every single month. Um, so specialists can also request uh, if you want QA staff to score or monitor a particular contact that would be in addition to um, your monthly total, uh, just in order to clarify anything or because you have a question about it or just because you want to know, you know, maybe you've been doing some coaching and you're like, hey, here's one where I really think I nailed this thing I've been working on. Or even just like, hey, here's kind of a call that I feel like is representative of how good I always do around utilities or around whatever. Um, you know, email the supervisor, uh, 201 supervisor, you know, by cleveland.org and just, you know, explain that you, you want this particular contact monitored. Um, and if there's anything particular you want listened for, of course, note that in the email. Um, scoring. This is just about how calls are scored. So one immediate thing that we got a lot of feedback on with exam is that people did not like receiving letter grades. Um, and I totally understand this um, as adult professionals, you know, not wanting to essentially have your current work uh, scored and graded basically in the same way as like a Lord of the Flies book report in eighth grade. Um, so I get that. And so what the new system does, score buddies, it just works in percentages. Um, so all scores are expressed uh, from zero to 100. Um, and the scorecard is the, the same scorecard we had used before. Uh, everything corresponds to a raw numeric score uh, that's generated by adding all possibility, possible points uh, attained in the scoring categories and then just compares it to the total number of points possible to get that percentage. Um, but so yeah, those will be presented uh, as a percentage, which you'll see when you get the score buddy. Uh, the other thing I guess I should mention is I'm not really going to review on this training um, the actual QA metrics. Um, as I've been doing those with new trainees, that usually takes about two hours to go through that full guide. But I will come back around to show where that guide is. And if people do have questions about specific metrics, um, you know, we can certainly address that at the end. Uh, the metrics have not changed at this point. Um, so when I show you the scorecards and score body, you're like, oh, it looks the same as our old scorecard did. For those who were familiar, for those who weren't familiar uh, and hadn't seen the scorecard before, um, it, 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 it's the scorecard that it is right now. Um, in terms of being able to log into ScoreBuddy and look at your scores and listen to your calls, uh, you still will have two half hour time slots per month. Um, and that's outside of your working shifts. Um, so whenever you want to, uh, outside of your scheduled shifts, you can punch into Kronos, um, you know, uh, log in and contact if you're using contact. So I know some folks uh, resource HC don't use in contact uh, for their, you know, HC for HC work resource at all. So if you don't use it, obviously don't worry about that. Um, but, you know, you'll all have, and I don't know for, for again, for resources may be different because you guys have a lot more time during the day where you're not scheduled to be doing work. So I don't even know if you'll have outside of work hours time. Um, but for everyone else, uh, two half hour time slots per month, um, just make sure you go into Kronos because we want to, you know, we need to make sure you get paid and to log in in contact so we can see what you were, you know, we see, oh, they clocked in for half an hour. What were they doing? Oh, they put themselves in the QA review on available state they are reviewing their score buddy uh, content. Um, and then just make sure obviously to log out and punch out when you're finished. And that, that's, um, you know, within the next couple weeks, um, there should be some scores in there to review. Uh, 201 specialists, you guys will have 30 days. That's like you guys, like I'm reading the slide as if I'm not talking to you. Uh, you guys will have 30 days after uh, receiving uh, any, any, any score to dispute if there's portions of the grading that you don't agree with, if you want it to be reevaluated, um, you know, just again, shoot an email to a 2 one supervisor. And again, as much detail as possible around what specifically you want focused on is always really, really helpful. Because otherwise we'll end up just getting in touch with you. I mean, we can get in touch with you anyway to ask, um, but it's really helpful to know specifically what it is about the call um, that we should really be listening for. Uh, coaching, and this is kind of a, a newer piece of this. Like I said, it's been uh, wonderful that we've been able to 
um, bring Molly into a, a full-time coaching and training position. And that's been really fantastic because I think one of the biggest pieces of the quality assurance kind of process that we were missing in the past past is really the ability to follow up on some of the scores and make sure everyone felt supported around, okay, so I got this score, but, and you're saying I need to improve in this area, but how am I going to do that? Um, so, so there is, of course, coaching now. Um, a big difference is I know we used to try to put in place that, oh, if you get an F on a single call during a month, that leads to some mandatory coaching. Um, because as I said, it really shouldn't be about the individual call. Uh, and we're doing fewer calls that we're monitoring. Um, and we have quarterly check-ins now, which is great because, I mean, I know on a monthly basis you're receiving some feedback, but I know you have your actual quarterly check-in each quarter with your, with your manager. So staff who have been taking live calls for more than 90 days who score below a 70% over any quarter um, is where that kind of mandatory coaching and corrective action kind of kick in. Um, so that way, you know, we're, we're looking at the total from at least nine calls over that three month period, rather than saying, Oh, you had a, this one kind of call that maybe wasn't great. So let's draw up this whole coaching plan right now. Um, recognizing again, we're doing fewer calls and we know that everyone has a bad call here and there. So, um, you know, no point in highlighting that we again, really want to make it about, uh, what support we can provide and obviously what positive feedback we can give on um, this part of those quarterly check-ins. So that's probably the other like biggest change to the process. Um, oh, well, I mean, I guess this is, this is new. Although again, people who are in their first 90 days have no idea this is new. So it might as well have been in the process before that during specialists first 90 days out of training and taking live calls, uh, monitor calls won't count toward that quarterly average. So you'll still have those three calls a month scored. You'll actually probably have more than that potentially um, because it's your first 90 days and we want to make sure that you're supported and feel like, you know, that, that we know what you need um, to be successful once you kind of have sat in the job for a little while. But you kind of have a 90 day um, grace period once you're released out of training and put on the phones for the first time. And uh, again, the same with requesting a, call, a contact be monitored. Specialists, you, you can, this is even kind of outside of a QA process, you guys can always request like coaching, retraining on a topic. If there's just anything that you feel uncertain about, um, you know, always just contact the supervisor about it. Um, the call calibrations. So uh, Call calibration is kind of a process that takes place to the side of quality assurance. So you can see here, it's a regular group evaluation of a call that's not designed as much to focus on that call and looking at that specialist or looking at their process, but it's really about trying to poke holes in the QA process. Uh, so the way call calibration works is um, the management team all uh, sit down and review individually the same call we all score it, then we all get together, compare our score sheets, and then listen to the call as a group, and then score it as a group, and then kind of see how closely everyone came to that group score. And this makes sure that like when you have a question, if you had a question about any of these scoring elements, that I would give you kind of the same answer as to how that scored as Stan would give you, as Molly would give you, um, as Chris would give you, or Aaron would give you, you know? Uh, and so we're going to be starting those up again. Um, all calibration, calibration sessions are going to be held at least twice per month. Um, they're led by the QA specialist, and they include, at a minimum, uh, the specialist and at least three members of the 211 management team. And oftentimes, we'll pull a community resource department staff member into those as well, um, just because they're also a really great opportunity to see ways we can kind of shore up, you know, any issues or just improvements we can make to the resource database. Um, I know there are sometimes, um, you know, when, you know, a certain call is, uh, there are certain elements of calls that we may say, oh, well, like that resource was described really strangely on that call. Why did that person describe it that way? But then you look in the database and go, oh, well, it's because it's kind of the language in the database is a little bit strange. We could probably improve that. And then that makes sure that, you know, that's not counted against uh, the specialist. Um, 
So those are call calibrations. Oh, there's one more slide here. Oh, that's right, and this is important. The specials, if your call is calibrated, you may be coached or you may be told, hey, we calibrated your call and it was awesome um, based on the result of that, but none of those calibrated scores, like the individual ones from the managers or the group calibrated score are actually counted towards your average. Like I said, the calibration kind of sits at the, to the side is more administrative about actually monitoring the process of evaluating calls than it is about that individual call itself. Although oftentimes the calls calibrated are ones, you know, Stan may just say, hey, there's a scenario here that I couldn't figure out based on our current um, QA policy, like how to handle this. You know, maybe it's like this feels like it should be an NA for an element that we originally had said doesn't have NA possible. It has to be a yes or a no, but it doesn't seem fair to give or take away points or, you know, something like that. So that's um, just the, the overview of current monitoring policy we will get you out a copy of the full one that kind of also breaks out the communication content and procedure in terms of the reasoning for those three things and also provides, you know, just some more detail on some of those uh, points that I just went over, but um, that's the major stuff to know. Uh, does anyone have any questions about that stuff? Okay. Uh, well, now we're going to get into Score Buddy. Uh, yay, Score Buddy. Uh, and, it, and the parrot. There's a Score Buddy parrot. Look at him. Uh, so the URL um, for Score Buddy is just is www.scorebuddyqa.com. This is actually already up on uh, the staff page, too, so you don't really have to remember it in the same way, like for whatever else you use that. Um, and I'll pull the staff page up in a – well, let me just grab it now. I have it pulled up already. Um, so if you go to your internal applications, you have ScoreBuddy right there. Um, everyone has accounts set up, and so yesterday at around 7.30 um, when we started the first training, um, you should have gotten an email. It's probably, I'm sure it went to your junk email uh, from ScoreBuddy. And so at this point, you know, when you grab that, you'll, it'll force you to move it into your inbox. Um, I know at last night's training, there, there was some confusion because when you put it in your inbox, it still appears in your inbox from when the original email was sent. So it'll be a new email from 7.30 uh, yesterday. Um, but when you have that, you can click the link. Uh, you can set up your account. When you go to set up your account, it is not going to tell you that your password must be at least eight characters, have at least one uppercase, one lowercase, and one number, but it does. Uh, so if you have the problem that a lot of people had, where they just kept creating a password, um, being given no direction by the software as to what that password needed to include, and having the page just refresh with just a blank password field again, um, that's the problem. Um, I don't know why it does not give you an error um, when it has those requirements, but just know that. And also, this PowerPoint will be available. So um, again, if you, if you have issues setting up a password, it just it does have uh, some requirements. Um, right now, when you go in there, there's probably not going to be, uh, I mean, some people may have some September contacts scored in there. A lot of folks aren't going to see anything just because, again, September is the first official month, and those practice scorecards haven't been attached to your um, accounts at this point. Um, so, you know, by next Friday, certainly you should have a lot more information and kind of scores you can check out and recordings you can listen to, but there's not going to be too much in there. So don't be alarmed when you like log in and you just have kind of a blank dashboard. Um, but I'm going to show you guys, but first I'll just walk through some screenshots of the dashboard, but then I'll actually pull up um, the software and log into it so you can kind of see what it looks like when you're using it in real time. So hey, this is the new, uh, this is the dashboard for the new QA software, which is, um, again, I think it gives you a much better view into kind of what's happening than exam does. Um, you can see uh, at the top, I'm just breaking this down by its kind of elements, you have your score. And so this reflects your overall every call ever scored ever score. So for all of the um, calls you have in there, that's that score. And then you also have a team score. Um, and I know I've mentioned this before, right now the teams are uh, on site and remote. So that's how they're kind of split up. And so when you see the team score, if you are a remote uh, specialist, 
uh, you are seeing this, the aggregate score for all other remote specialists and that same for on-site. Um, and so that's where I think you'll get a little more benchmarking to see where you're at in comparison. Um, so you can kind of get a better idea. I feel like before everyone was sort of in this vacuum where you had the score, but you had no sense of how that related to really anything other than, you know, some goals maybe that you were given. You'll also see, um, I'll get more into this horrifying looking uh, red arrow that's here. Um, and then you also have this kudos um, thing that's with, a little, with a little medal of valor there. Kudos, what's that? Uh, kudos is a thing that ScoreBuddy has. Uh, I think the parrot invented it. And it's, we're just able to assign something that's kind of like a little good job. And we we're talking about how do we, you know, what, what constitutes a kudos? Well, definitely any call that scores over 90% earns, earns you a little kudos point. And then also calls that make Stan say, wow. Um, and I'm just, and believe me, I'm sitting here right in the same queue with him. So I'm hearing him say, wow, all day, but we want to really give him a way to reflect that so that you kind of know, even if a call didn't score 90%, um, you still may have really gone out of your way to do an exceptional job for a client. But I want Stan to have a little opportunity just to talk to you. Um, so it's, you know, you have a little more understanding of like when, when you might get that kudos point. So here's another word from Stan. Yeah, so uh, the kudos, uh, wow. We, we know that you, you all are taking some incredibly, uh, some, some complicated calls. They can be very difficult at times. Uh, and, and, and kind of like Matt uh, alluded to is that the, the score it may not always reflect uh, the, the, the work that you put into that call and the effort that it took for you to, to kind of resolve that that call and, and find a successful solution. Um, so, and, and like I said, I, I've I've been there. I've been on the, I've been on some of those uh, some of those difficult calls. So I, I can definitely, uh, you know, understand uh, where you are and where you may be coming from sometimes. Um, and so, when it comes to kudos and me saying wow, it's really just a matter of when I know that uh, you've. You, you know, you, you did some thinking outside the box, uh, you, you know, so, and sometimes that's what you have to do with, with some of these situations. Uh, and, and, it'll, and, and the score may not always show it. It may not be a, a 90 score or better, but it, it was definitely a, a great call where uh, that person felt so much uh, more relief at the end of that call. You know, in, in some cases where uh, people are calling and, and, and they're under so much pressure and, and, uh, and they've been listened to uh, and, and, and been allowed to talk about some things and, and put some things into perspective and, 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 and develop a plan of action so that they can move forward and, and manage some of these more difficult things in their lives. When they thought they had no options available to them, uh, you made a difference in their life and made them feel better, allowed them to be aware that there are uh, some potential uh, options that may help them, uh, that this isn't, the, you know, this isn't it for them. Uh, and so when, when you do that and, and, you know, it, it's being done on the regular basis, I'm, I'm hearing things on the regular basis that I, I'm just like, well, that was amazing. Uh, the, this, this person did a great job. Uh, and so you, you need to be aware of that. So I want to make you aware of when you, you've you done something awesome uh, and, and it may not be shown in the score. Uh, so you'll also get uh, that wow, that kudos. So you know that as well. Thanks, Dan. Uh, back to that exciting dashboard. Um, you'll see that you have a trending line, um, which is reflective of the last 12 scores that you have. Um, and so that's where I get back to that, ew, this gross, like for at least my scores, this downward trending arrow. This arrow just shows kind of where your scores, you know, if they're steady, it'll just be grayed out. Uh, if, if it's a downward trend, uh, obviously it's, it's red and horrifying. And if it's an upward trend, I guess it's green and friendly. I don't love this, um, as you may be able to tell, but I don't know that we can remove it. Um, 
So I don't know. I, I just highlight it because it, it just looks weird. Because at first I was even like, what what does that? What's the function of that? Because all it's really doing is identifying what the general trend of this line is. Um, that's its only function. So I don't know. It's there. It's kind of gross, but that's the one thing where. Uh, this is cool though. Uh, at, at the bottom of your dashboard, you have something that kind of splits up that the sections of the scorecard. Um, and so, and this will actually, the, the resource scorecard has even more sections. I think it has about six sections in it. Um, but this is a great way to kind of just see at a just high level, oh, you know, I'm really, really like great with communication. Probably don't even have to really think about that. But like my procedure isn't, isn't as awesome. And maybe, you know, hopefully you have some comments that also are reflective of both things. And if you go to your comment, you're like, oh, then look, I have a lot of really positive communication comments and I have a lot of kind of tips of how I can maybe improve my procedure score. Um, but it's, it's nice to not have to go into a bunch of individual scorecards and things to kind of just get a broad idea of, you know, where are the places where you could find just some individual metrics probably that just turn around to just help give a little boost to your performance. Uh, and so now because there's just some other functionality and I want to make sure to be able to show you a scorecard and show how you get recordings pulled up and everything, I'm just going to pull up ScoreBuddy and log into it. Um, so this actually isn't the, the home page login. Let me go there just so you can see exactly what you'll see the first time you visit it. Okay. Here you go. Take a login there. And that'll take me to this actual login screen. Uh, you'll see I'm going to use my Gmail because I'm actually logging into my like specialist account rather than my like set stuff up account. One moment, please. So polite. Okay. Here we are on that uh, dashboard that I was just showing you. And so you can see um, if I scroll over those, it actually shows me the score for each call. And then let me select one. And this is so now you can actually see what you would see uh, when you jump in here. So you see your, uh, your the employee name, who monitored it. It's got your team, your supervisor. Uh, it's got an event date, an event time. You can see an in contact ID and the refer transaction ID both be reflected. And so um, here you can see one of the other big changes here is that for each of the scores, like you could an exam, obviously you see if you got a yes, a no, an NA, but you can also see comments on each uh, individual metric. Now we're not going to leave comments. Stan's not going to comment on every single one of these as he goes down, but this gives him a way where you know, if it's a yes, but there's something extra to point out, or he, like he really liked the way you phrased something or really liked something you did, uh, here he can actually comment on that individual piece around, oh, great empathy shown, like good empathy statement, whatever. Or, you know, hey, this was good, but could use improvement with this piece of it um, just on the individual metric, which is nice. And then um, if I come down here to the bottom of the card, this is where, of course, you can see the total for that contact, and it also will break the individual one out into, again, our three sections, communication, content, and procedure, to kind of give you a summary of that. Then there's also space for like a major, uh, for a, a comment that is just general to the entire contact that doesn't single out a certain area, but this is really where I'd expect Stan would be kind of um, making observations, especially about trends he's noticed on calls overall. Um, that, you, that you've taken to say, oh, you know, this is something that you always do really well. It's done really well again here, or like here is a thing you could do uh, to improve this certain, th this kind of thing. But I would expect these to, I guess, be more, in my examples, I feel like vague though they were still seem to be about specific elements. This, I guess, would be used for more general um, evaluation of the call. And like I said, kind of behaviors. Um, and then at the very, very bottom, you have, uh, you know, an attachment. It would normally be a call. Uh, instead, this is a hot dog, and he's miming 
DJing. I think he might just be dancing. Um, and so, yeah, that's the scorecard uh, that you're kind of used to saying. Um, in a new great score buddy context. Uh, events here, this just kind of shows you a history of what kind of went on in score buddy. So this is where you can see like when a score sheet was added or when something was scored. Comments, this collects those kind of overall general comments. Um, this is just a way to look at all of the comments you have and it'll show you the score of the uh, contact and then whatever it is, whether, whether it's a good review of Starship Troopers like this one here or a bad review of Starship Troopers like this one here or just a general comment like that comment there. Um, goals, um, you know, if you're working with a coach or even from a group standpoint for the entire center, we could just record and set goals here that you could then see, oh, what are my goals? What are my team's goals? What are my group goals? And if I go back to scorecard, I just kind of get to the summary again. These flags, a couple people asked about, um, you can ignore them. What these are for is uh, some organizations have, sec have individual metrics on their scorecards where if you get a no, you fail either the entire card or the entire section. Um, we don't have anything like that, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, and that's really like your that's your dashboard um, and that's where you're coming to view your calls and everything. Um, like I said, when you log in for the first time, you're probably not going to see much of anything other than like your name and you'll see this panel and you'll have the ability if you want to edit your picture or whatever, that's cool. Um, you'll be able to do that. But then over the next couple of weeks, you should definitely see, you know, some scores coming in, including like two months worth of kind of practice scoring that Stan did and then also your September scores should start populating there. Um, and then again, we already looked, well, we looked at the staff page for the score buddy. Also on the staff page, um, if people want to review the actual QA guide, if you go to informational materials, the QA guide is right there. And this is that, like I said, um, not going to focus too much on it, mostly, I mean, because it, it has not changed. I know the folks who are in training are meeting with me individually to go over uh, this stuff. But if you want a refresher on any of the context around those metrics, it's all here. Um, so you can pull that up anytime right from there. Um, and so like uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, go over is so based on those two months that Stan had uh, looked at, our current center average is 69.5%. Um, this is actually pretty much in line with where we were uh, at the end of December when Susan left. We were around the 70%. Um, this is great. I mean, this reflects, I think, how high the expectations are around those metrics. Um, but I think it's important um, to to leave ourselves a lot of room to improve, right? If, if I always looked and we had a 98, I'd be on, oh, well, we're just great at everything and there's nothing we really need to do, which is never the case, especially as I said, in, in this kind of the climate for nonprofit and everything, I think we can always be kind of moving ourselves forward in what we're able to offer and in what we're doing. So this is great, but we also wanted to set a goal. Uh, when we sat down before this training, we kind of said, well, can we set a goal for the center, something that we can work towards that isn't cartoonishly high, or I'm not saying, and we want to be at 100%, um, it seems attainable. Uh, and so, I, but that also isn't like, hey, we want to be at 71% because, you know, so anyway, our current center goal is 75%. Um, we're just getting back into QA. We're just kind of ramping up this coaching. Um, so it's just something to work towards and something that, again, we'll be providing support and trainings and everything once we get more uh, data around some of this. Um, but, you know, that seemed fair and sensible. Uh, we have a question over the chat. Janice asks, does the arrow change with every call or overall? Yeah, Janice, that's a great question. Um, it's, I mean, it's, a it's, it's based on that trend. So like here you can see when I only have three calls and there's not even really a way to get to a trend, uh, it's you know just pretty static. Um, so I, I don't know, I mean, if it's down and then you get one that's like 100, does that like,
switch to say, oh, well, now it's an upward trend. I don't know what calculation this is actually running. Um, so I don't know. Uh, so we'll find out once we have more information in there. Uh, so some of this stuff I'm interested, you know, once we use it a bit and have a better sense of how it works, uh, I think we'll be way more poised to say, oh, and we hate this or we like this. And then at that point, um, I, it does not seem that this dashboard is particularly customizable. Um, but I don't know for a fact that it can't be. I don't think we have much control over it, but I don't know if we go to them. I could kind of say, hey, can we just get that removed? I don't know. Um, so we'll just have to see. But that's a really good question, and I just don't know the answer, and I don't want to make something up. So um, good question. Um, whoops, let me just have that pulled up over here. Um, and so that's uh, that's kind of what's going on with quality assurance. That's what Stan's been working on. That's what I've kind of been, at least in the background, looking at. I haven't really done much outside the score, buddy. What questions do folks have? Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us for a bit and going through all this um, through this stuff. Like I said, I mean, I, I don't think it's a huge shift or change, and I hope that some of the stuff that has changed you feel like has, it's, it's an improvement over what we were doing before. Um, and I really also want to thank Stan for how much work he's been putting in um, to, you know, just learning, uh, working through this process, and then also kind of making suggestions and, uh, you know, just getting a sense of the work. Uh, I think it's been really fantastic working with him, and so I'm really excited to have him on the team, along with, you know, of course, everybody else. You guys are all awesome. Thank you, Matt. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you next time when uh, the topic will be utility assistance. So we'll Yay. see you then. Thank you. <laughs> I stole the template Thank from you. The last one. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. uh,